Okay, I hope the microphone works well and you can hear us. So, hi, my name is Kenya and myself and my avatar are super excited about being here at MetchXR inside the metaverse. And uh, uh, Nils is here with me. Can you say please a few words about your background? Yeah, hi, I'm Nils Konstantinovs. I'm child and adolescent psychotherapist and I also lead a therapy center for uh, adolescents and young people. And what is one of the projects that we'll be talking about that we're running in the center. Thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, perfect. So um, let me tell about a few words about the, the uh, how everything has started and give short introduction about well, Theater Every. So Theater Every has uh, over 24,000 employees globally. We are one of the largest IT companies in the Nordics, and uh, we have thousands of customers in 90 countries. In Finland, we are among the top contributors to R&D initiatives. And alongside of our core business in technology and IT, we are actively seeking partnerships on research and development arena to find out new opportunities. And we are committed to creating positive impact in the society and to empower people through advancement of technology. Next slide, please. So today we are here together with Niels to share an outstanding journey of uh, utilizing immersive technology Increase accessibility to mental health services for youth. The concept has originated from several prior initiatives by Theatre Every. One of them was funded by Business Finland and it was research around distress management. The project is called MedicCard. And uh, the other one also is the award winning campaign against online bullying, Polite Tribe. So the VR Therapy Lab initiative is a collaboration between Latvia, and now, let's take a step behind the scenes of immersive therapy. Niels, please uh, tell about the insights and the learnings so far, the impact that you have realized with using immersive technology and supporting the mental health care for mental health care for youth and young children. Also, your vision for the future. Yes, thanks, Laksenia. Uh I'll be more than happy to share all of that, but before I'll just give a very brief overview of the uh, mental health landscape in general, because uh, I think that's very important here. And we've been seeing tremendous change in the way mental health is delivered and also people experience various mental health problems uh, during the past 10, even 20 years. It all began somewhere around 1990s or and 2000. And it's especially true if we look at children and young people. So with every new decade, the number, uh, the percentage of young people experiencing such mental health issues as depression or anxiety disorder rose by about 30%. And that all changed during COVID-19 pandemics, as we all know. Children and especially adolescents, aged 14 to 19 years of age, uh, so for many reasons, many of those are probably not yet clear to us, but they somehow experienced this pandemic as very disastrous to their mental well being. And now, according to some data, if you walked into any classroom, there'd be one in three children who need some additional help or support. So that's very, those are very huge numbers, we understand. So anything that we did before will not be sufficient. There will not be sufficient uh, mental health specialists. And it's also that we cannot reach as many children using the various methods and ways and approaches that we uh, employed before. So it, there's very, very, urgent demand in looking for new various ways to reach more young people and to engage them in more meaningful and in more uh, supportive ways. That's why we uh, thought about virtual reality and that's how we got into contact with uh, Cheddar Every. And that's, uh, so we built, a, first we built a lab where to, where to explore uh, the very basics of psychotherapy, we call that psychoassessment. 
So if you could uh, skip to the next slide, you'll see a short video. Maybe you can explain, please, a little bit how the session is meant to work between the healthcare professional and the patient. Yes. yes, what you're seeing here is basically you're seeing the patient within the room. And what she's doing is she's uh, conducting certain exercises, and those are meant for the uh, therapist, which apparently is me in this video, uh, to actually observe. And to and to observe certain behaviors and to observe how this particular child is behaving within this therapeutic room setting. We're also uh, we're also asking for them to perform various tasks, and some of those tasks would be those that would normally be conducted within just an ordinary therapy room. And uh, that's one of the things that I'll uh, tell you briefly. In, in a moment, but if you skip to the next slide, please, uh, how we all began this, it was obviously we did a phase one trial where we just, uh, we wanted to understand whether this is feasible and whether this is safe for what we call clinical population, which basically means children and young, well, we all know that kids play virtual reality. Uh, so, and that's not a problem at all, but what we had to find out was two things. First, whether it's safe for clinical population. So that means children and young people with certain mental health issues, certain mental health disorders, whether they would find virtual reality as safe and applicable as uh, the rest. And we also had to find out whether it was usable within a certain mental health setting. So we did a trial we, and we trialed 50 young people ages uh, 10 to 25 with all sorts of various mental health uh, disorders ranging from autism spe uh, spectrum disorder to depression, anxiety, and everything in between. And what we found was, uh, and it was quite surprising actually, is that uh, it was very well received by, uh, by uh, young people. And they enjoyed the idea that their mental health could be addressed by this new technology. And they uh, and so we thought that was also a very important insight because one of the huge issues in adolescent mental health is how to engage young people into therapeutic assessment, into the therapeutic relationship. And we found that virtual reality yeah, actually has this asset. But also, what's also very important is that we 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 found out that it worked, that it was safe, uh, and that it was very quick to teach. To young people who came in for assessment, we uh, we noticed that we only need 10, 15 minutes uh, for a first-time user to actually start using this device for therapeutic purposes. So uh, we concluded with a phase one trial, very positive results, and we we moved on to next phase. A next slide, please, uh, which. Uh, yeah, so it's phase two, and that's what we're doing now. And what we're trying to find out now is very, very exciting. Well, we're we're looking at whether the stuff that child does within virtual reality lab, whether it's the same thing that he or she would do in natural setting, let's say real life setting. And I'll give you a brief example. So one of the tests that we use with children, especially with the younger ones, drawing. There are certain uh, pictures that we ask them to draw, like a house, a tree, a person. And we're looking at whether this thing that they draw within the virtual reality setting is exactly the same thing that they would draw in real life setting. So if we, f and that's just one of the tests, as an example, we're testing various such uh, assessments. So if this proves out to be true, then we'll be uh, sure that we can use virtual reality for clinical assessment and, and we will get exactly the same results uh, that we would get in real life. 
settings. And so far, results look promising, and we'll get the first paper out, I hope, sometime in uh, February or March. Uh, so, uh, next slide, please. So, um, just to conclude it briefly, uh, that some of the things that we noticed is that obviously uh, this is a very, very exciting and engaging technology. But we're not there yet in terms of uh, of the actual technology. So we can't. Uh, so there's lots, lots of things to improve for it to be able to reach and help young people the way that we are expecting it to perform. But there are many directions that we see very clearly right now that we can uh, move on to. So, say, for example, the forensic assessments. We know that we could probably assess children much more safely in a much more appropriate environment using virtual technology. Uh, also, say young people experiencing psychosis, which is that they hear voices in their heads. We could use avatars for, uh, for exploring these issues, and we could also use avatars for self-image issues for issues related to personality, to gender. It's a thing that's very um, urgent for young people uh, of today's society. But probably the most important thing and direction is that we will be able to reach more, uh, a lot more young people all across the world, not only reach them, but engage them in ways and in therapeutic setting that they find engaging and that suits and that is appropriate to their everyday experiences. And that's one more way how uh, we can help and support uh, children and young people. And that's something that they really need today. So uh, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for, for giving this uh, great introduction and uh, overview of the project that has been going on now for over a year. And uh, the team that has been working around on creating the uh, very safe and um, uh, and approachable environment has been, as I mentioned, located in multiple countries. So it's international work that has been ongoing. And uh, we are very much invested in looking forward to the results of the second phase of clinical trial in order to be able to roll out this opportunity and this product to more healthcare professionals to support even more of the young, uh, of the youth and the young children cope with their problems and not allow them to spill into any of their issues uh, later on. Um, I think we could uh, uh, do so that we open up for discussion and um, very much welcome the questions from the audience or any comments that you have. Maybe if, um, if the organizers make the last slide. Uh, there. So, um, thank you very much for your attention. And um, yeah, happy to hear any comments or questions that, that you'd like to ask Nils and I.